In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the basic functionality of uh, UV mapping. So I'm going to start off by making a material. So I'm going to do rendering, material editor, slate material editor. I have a map, which I'm going to drag over here. Now this is a explicit map, meaning this is not meant to tell across the surface of an object. I'm going to bring over a standard material. So I'm just going to click standard and drag that over. And then I'm going to connect the bitmap into the diffuse color slot. Now that two-dimensional image is being wrapped around and filling in all the color on this material sphere. I'm going to right click on the material sphere and come down and say show realistic material and viewport and now it'll actually display on an object. So next I'm going to come over let's make this a little bit smaller use my navigator to move over so I can see the material. I'm going to come here I'm in create geometry, I'm going to click on box, and now I'm going to slowly come down and click on keyboard entry. And I'm going to go in and enter values. I'm going to type in 100, use the tab key on my keyboard, type in 100 for width, hit tab on my keyboard, and type in 100 for height. And I'm going to click create, but not before I make my perspective view active. There we go. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard to zoom out in perspective and now I'm going to go to modify. I'm going to come back over to the material editor. I am going to right click on my material and say assign material to selection. I can close my material editor now. I'm going to use the Alt W command to maximize this viewport. Now you'll see that my box already has the texture on display inside of it. That's because when you create an object, right, whether it's a standard primitive, there's an option to generate mapping coordinates. If you turn that off, nothing will show up. If you turn it on though, a basic set of UVs are created. Now, there's some tools, and if you want to see how to set up the configure modifier sets, please refer to the notes that I created for that that are filed under common notes. Up here I'm going to click UVW map. UVW map is a series of projection maps. The default is planar and so you can see that the texture is being projected in a planar fashion. All right? Everything that is at the edge, that pixel just gets dragged straight down. I can change the direction by changing the alignment over here. I can also come in and I can enter new values or just click the spinners to adjust its size. There's also a gizmo, which if I select the gizmo and move it, you can see that I can manually adjust it. I could even go in and rotate if I so choose. Now if I rotate around, you see that what it's doing is it's just projecting out the image. This little bar at the top represents the top of my texture. You could see that because here's the numbers. The green line represents the right side of the image. Uh, let's go in. I'm going to come into my options here. I'm going to click reset. I'm going to set it back to the default of Z. There's other projection types such as cylindrical. If I raise up the gizmo here so you can see it, you can see that what it's doing is it's taking my image and it's wrapping it around the side. If I hit fit, cylindrical is a great place to show you that there's actually options to tile here. Now U represents horizontal left to right tiling. So if I change that value to two, you can see my image tiled two times. I can even do three. And you can see that tiling my image three times actually gets it back to its appropriate size so it's not being stretched at all. You'll also be happy to know that cylindrical also has an option to cap. So at the top of your image can get capped on top. Now the tiling settings are just going to work for every aspect of it. Inside UVW map you can't per polygon change it. There's also a spherical. I'm going to set my tiling back to one. There's also an option for spherical mapping. Again there's the top and this is the side of the image. As well as shrink wrap which I personally never really found a good use for. There's box, 
right? And you can see the box. So the box just projects from every side. And then there's face. Face is not as exciting on a box that only has a few sides. If I assign my material to this other sphere, and I come in and put UVW map, and I set it to face, you'll get a better sense of what it does in that it just maps your image to every single face. Get rid of that. Okay, so those are the basic settings for the UVW map. Now that's not exactly what we want to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the UVW map. I'm going to put Unwrap UVW on. Unwrap UVW allows us to go in to actually the individual components. So the UVW, Unwrap UVW allows us to individually work on the different components. Like we could select vertex points. You'll notice we can't move them here. We're really just selecting them in this viewport. There's a separate edit UV editor where we can actually move their position inside of 2D space or XY. And the reason for that is you have Z, X, Y, and then you go into unwrap UVW, and then you have the U and V. And I apologize for a moment ago saying why I meant to say U and V. Okay, so you can switch between the different components. There's even a selection window. Uh, there's, if I select one vertex, you'll see that there's a grow selection and shrink selection. There's even edge and loop selection. Notice that by default, ignore back face is on. So if I region select and hit control R and orbit around, you'll notice this one vertex point at the bottom is not selected because that vertex was facing away for us. So there's other options in here, such as display projection. So if I come into polygon and I select a polygon here, I can use a projection map on it. So if I want to arrange this, I can even change it so it's facing in another direction and it works effectively just like the UVW map modifier. So there's also peel which we'll get into in another lesson. I'm going to go ahead and open the UV editor. Now this is a completely separate editor and it works off of U axis and V axis. If I come here to vertex point and select just one vertex point, you'll see that that is a V point, right? It's one on V, zero on U. If I select this point, this is one on U and zero on V. So uh, the display is slightly different for later versions of Max. There's always going to be an option to show the active map in the dialog. Uh, the icon's slightly different. You can turn it off to just see your polygons and vertex points and edges. Uh, if you already have a material assigned, you should be able to click and come down and actually select that material so you can see it. So for this exercise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the polygons. So I'm gonna click select by element. And so when I click on my sphere and go into orbit and move around, you'll see that it selected every polygon that was connected to the one that I just selected. I'm gonna turn that off now. Now for this demo, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do mapping, flatten mapping, and say OK. Now, flat mapping is going to take every surface of your object, and it's going to lay it out completely flat inside what I call zero to one space. Right? This represents one of your images. You'll notice if I move everything over to the side, the image is still there. But that's because all textures by default are set to tile. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all these polygons, just move them over to the side. I'm going to select just the one that makes up the top. And I'm going to move it over here to where the number one is. I'm going to use the freeform tool and grab the edge and make it so it's a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to select the polygon next to it. So I'm going to use Control R to orbit and select this polygon. All right, it's already selected here, so I can move it over. And I want to bring it over here. I'm just going to adjust it so that it kind of fits. There we go. Now what am I doing? I want to make it so that the vines wrap around, which would mean if I come over to the side here, that would mean this should be three. So I selected the polygon and I'm going to move it over here to line it up. There we go. That 
and make this number four. There he is. Select them, move them over. And I'm just using a very basic tool here. Just the free form allows me to select a corner and bring this in. It can kind of sit on there. Control R brings me into orbit. If I click inside the circle for orbit, I can orbit around. If I click outside the circle, it just spins the canvas. So make sure you're clicking inside the circle. And then the middle mouse button to pan. Right now I got number five. So I'll just bring him over. And make him a little bit smaller here. And then I have number six. All right, so number six, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna move him over about here. and I'm, so if I want my, I'm gonna hit F2, which will toggle the shaded selection. I want the vines to wrap around. So it looks like number six needs to be rotated. I could select the handles here and rotate them. I right click to end that. There's also rotate buttons, which are frustrating um, because when you click the button, nothing happens. It takes it a moment to update. Usually you need to just click in the viewport in order to get it to update. Uh, it's an issue that's been with 3ds Max for uh, decades, and I don't know why they haven't adjusted and fixed that yet. All right, so we go. So now we've gone through and we've taken our map and we've arranged it going around in a circle. So now this modifier, Unwrap UVW, it allows you to go in and rearrange your UVs. It is not the UV data. So what you're going to do is just do right click and say collapse to and say yes. The UV data is stored inside the vertex points. So anytime you make changes, right click and say collapse to. I'm going to show you something here. If I come down to the box and say yes and put an edit poly on here, what happened? Well, what happened was I lost everything. So if you go down in the stack, there's a good chance that you're going to lose any work that you did. So if you want to make a change to your model, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you first right click and say collapse to. Okay. So uh, there you go. End of lesson.